Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you. It is eternal word. You will watch over this word. To perform it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. I am reading from Matthew chapter 7. I am in a new King James. Matthew 7. 24, therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain descended, floods came, the wind blew, beat on that house. It did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But, Everyone who hears this saying of mine does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. It is a shifting sand. And the rain descended and the flood came. The winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended this saying that the people were astonished of his teaching for he taught them with one having authority and not as the scribes. Go ahead and have your seats, please. You know, whenever I get a new book, I read the preface, what the author is going to talk about. And then I jump to the conclusion and find out what he talked. So everyone knows, even Mahatma Gandhi from India knew about Sermon on the Mountain. That's where he got the movement for our independence in India called nonviolence. Martin Luther King Jr. heard about Gandhi and he, the bottom line is this, it all came from the word of Jesus. So you might not know Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. So today I'm going to conclude Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7 in 32 minutes and then I'll be out. No, I did, took it last Sunday and uh, today I'm going to be at 12.30 because I have a lunch appointment. Oh, that's a <laughs> <laughs> you know, my background is mathematics. So we, we call couples or twins equations. So I'm going to call this one five twins on the mountain. So if you don't know. The whole sermon on the mountain. Always remember your hand. And these five things. You will remember the whole sermon. Isn't that nice? This is your cheating. For exam. So in Matthew 5. He said, don't be a hypocrite. Say, don't be a hypocrite. Meaning, don't, don't be a two-faced liar. You know, we're not talking about you. Second one, by the way, these are not the five twins. This is just the introduction. Matthew 6, Jesus said, down with performance. You know, sometimes I have a hard time with the, with the holiness people. They put so much emphasis on performance, performance, performance. Nothing wrong with it. But you have to go to the root. Root is the grace. Through faith. Fruit is the works. That's another message. So 
So Matthew 5, don't be a hypocrite. Matthew 6, down with performance. Matthew 7, judge yourself first. Look in a mirror. I know for those who come to the Bible fellowship, that's what we are studying. Look in a mirror. Then in the same chapter, he talks about all this sermon that I talk, it is all about commitment. And the last one, which I'm going to talk about, secret of unshakable life. Not unshakable house. Unshakable life. Like people always tell me, you're the same. Well, I'm trying to be like Jesus. All right, so let's go. Five twins. Conclusion of this whole message. Let me read to you. You are already there in Matthew 7. Okay? Number one, he talks about two gates. Verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go by it. Because narrow is the gate, difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Twins, two things. Number one, two gates. And in these days and time, everybody has a God. So don't ask a question, which God are you serving? Because everybody has a God. And in these days and time, because of politics, because X, Y, Z, they want to be hard on me. Why are you so dogmatic about Jesus is the only way? What about the Buddhists? What about the Hindus? What about the Muslims? What about Jain? What about Sikh? And I say, what about it? See, because you want to be politically correct on your job. Oh, it is so quiet again in this Methodist church. See, because, oh, I don't talk about politics and I don't talk about religion. You're not a witness for Jesus if you don't talk about religion. We not talk about religion. We are talking about relationship. Proverbs 14 and verse 12 says, People have an idea. All roads lead to Rome. They don't. Many are plants in the heart of a man. But only the counsel of God stands. Many are your ways of doing things. But uh -uh, there is a Bible way. And once again, let me tell you something. If you come to this church... This is what we believe. I don't tell you what I think. I don't tell you what is my opinion. I'm going to read it to you. And I just read to you, Jesus said, I am the way, the only way. John 14 and 6. So you come and tell me where all this road. And I know there was one man say, as long as you seeking God, you will make it to heaven. No. Your trouble is this. You seeking God, God is seeking you. That's the difference. First Timothy 2 and 5 says, there is only one mediator between man and Christ. The man, doesn't say the Lord Jesus, the man. Jesus said, I am the door. No one can come. 
So please don't get into it. Man, you enter your gate, I enter my way. I know. No. So first twin is two gates. Remember in 70s or whatever they had a Jesus only movement? So why we stopped? Oh, that was just the hippies. No, 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 no. I'm still Jesus only. Whether you like it or not, and that's the reason I, I mentioned to you when one time I was invited to all souls prayer meeting. And when my turn came, I said, all those prayers, they don't count. And that's why a lot of people don't invite me. Because they don't want to hear the truth. Prayer is not a prayer until it is addressed to our Father and it ends in the name of Jesus. That's the prayer. Let me ask you a question. Which door did you come? Number two. We're doing good time-wise. First twins say two gates. Number two, two destiny. It is heaven. Or hell. You cannot preach from the pulpit. Hell with the hell. This book says so. Well I don't believe. I don't believe. I will find out when you die. You is a fool. Like David Jeremiah said. It don't matter whether you believe it or not. Truth is truth. Amen. Dr. David Jeremiah said that, well, just said that you don't believe in a law of gravity. I don't believe it. Well, go on a 15th floor and fall and see whether you believe it or not. <laughs> just because your dumb self, oh, sorry, just because your dumb self don't believe it, that doesn't mean it is not truth. Truth is truth, and the truth is true. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth says, verily, verily, I say unto you. Ain't it too narrow? Eternal life. Wide, he said, many. Did you hear me? You know, we read in the Bible, in a revelation, and I saw a multitude of people which nobody can number. Thank God for it. But do you know number in a hell will be more than number in heaven? I didn't say that. Many will go to hell, but few will go to heaven. Let me tell you something. I'd rather be few and be proud. And be Marines for Jesus. Yeah. Folks, these are the days you got to stand up. Have some backbone. Amen. I'm a child of God. I believe this is the word of God. And God will watch over this word to perform it. I don't care whether you believe it or not. Right. Well, man wrote it. Well, who wrote Quran? Who wrote Bhagavad Gita? See, don't come in a... Don't back up that you, you don't have a defense. You should know what the word of God says. Like the Muslims. They believe that when Jesus... See, they're going to take a part of it. Jesus said, I'm going to my father. First of all, you all don't believe in God the Father. Because you will fight me when I say Jesus is the son of God. You all say Jesus is not the son of God. God is too powerful to have a son. 
But at the same time you believe, Jesus said that you yeah, go to my father and I will send you another comforter and another comfort it is Muhammad. But you forgot. Jesus said, another comfort will be with you forever and ever. Muhammad came and he died. He gone. Two gates. Two destiny. Let's read some. See your problems if y'all don't read book. You are on the Facebook and the social media all day long. God, Lord Almighty. And some of you are there now. Put your phone down. Amen. Try to act like I'm reading the scripture. No, you ain't. You think I was born yesterday? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. This is the conclusion of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I'm telling you, two gates, two destiny. Now let's go talk about two trees. This is number three. We're getting closer now. Let me read. Beware of false prophet who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do men get the grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from the thistle? Even so, Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down. I didn't say that. The Lord said, and thrown into fire. The Lord loves me so much, he cannot send me to the fire. You're sending yourself to the fire. Don't blame God. He, oh, hold up. Before he said that, he told you there are two gates. Enter through narrow. You will have eternal life. But now you want to argue with him. Oh, you love me too much. How are you going to send me to fire? You go through a wrong door. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Question is this. There are two gates, two destiny, two trees. Folks, everybody is bearing fruits. question is this, what kind? And you, listen to me, when you enter through the narrow into the eternal life, you telling me you are in John the 15, Jesus said, abide in me and my word abide in and you will bear fruits. So you cannot tell me I've been a Christian for 20 years, but I don't know what the book says. You thought you entered through the narrow, but you know you entered through the... Hold that thought, I'm going to hit it at the end. What kind of fruits are you bearing? Do you love Joy, peace. How come you always turning in your prayer request, Pastor? Lord, uh, pray for peace. For, no, I ain't gonna pray. Oh God, Lord, help me. Why is you asking me to pray for your fruit? And that's your job. Amen. Amen. You need to abide in Him. You need to Amen. see. But we want everybody else to do your work. It is hard to be a Christian. Uh-uh. Let me ask you a question. You know, I, uh, I got two peach trees in my backyard. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I water them in the morning. I have never heard peach tree say, well, peach tree ain't going to call me pastor, but say, well, let's just peach tree, Pastor Stephen. It is hard being a peach tree to bear peach tree. <laughs> My one tree is so loaded, 
all the branches are on the ground, fully loaded. But I have never heard those peach tree crying, it's hard to be a peach tree. So why is you calling me saying it is hard to be a Christian? Question is, is you a Christian? If you're a Christian, you're going to shut your mouth and just love. Oh, I'm going to get love. I'm going to get even. See, 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 see. You, 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 you just thought you entered through the narrow gate. You just played. Oh, Lord. Come on, come on. My job on Sunday is to trigger this thinking. You don't renew your mind. Some of you, okay, here we go. On a rabbit trail. Some of you, oh God. Pastor, pray for me. I will find the will of God. That's not my job. Why, like I have said for 40 years in this house, 30 years as a pastor, what do I always say? You is not going to kill me. You is not going to kill me. You is not going to make me fast and pray for you while you do everything under the sun. Don't come to church. Don't give nothing. Don't do nothing. Mm -mm. No, you do the work. And thought is this, why you don't know the will of God? I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand. I tell you why you don't know the will of God. It is very simple. That's a message in a message. Why you don't know the will of God. Number one, you must be born again. And even if you are born again, number two is this. You got to offer your body as a living sacrifice, which you don't do it. Your body rules. I want a cheeseburger. I want a double meat cheeseburger. I want a Coke. And don't forget my lemon pie to go with it. Huh? You're still controlled with your flesh. The reason you don't know the will of God, number one, you got to be born again. Even if you are born again, you need to take control of your body. Your body shouldn't control you. Number three, you need to renew your mind. You're not renewing your mind. Number four, be separated from the world. You're not separated from the world. And he said, if you do this thing, then you will know what is the good and perfect will of God the Father. It's not easy. It's easy to find the will of God. You make it hard. We love you, Pastor. Been here for 30 years, haven't changed yet, but said so two gates. Two destiny. Two trees. That does respond. Number four, two response. Two gates, two destiny, two trees, two response. Verse 21, 23. Here we go. I'm going to hammer this one hard here in a minute. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father that is in heaven. Don't say, I was Christian when I was little. I gave my life to the Lord, but for 60 years I lived like a devil. But now I'm in a church. You did in the church, never mind. Some of you catch it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father that is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me who work or who practice lawlessness to respond. It's not what your mouth says. Did you hear? It doesn't say they had done it. But they claim. This is what we have done. 
Just think of what I just said. They claim we have done it. How do we know? Just because you just say. Sometimes I ask people, do you tithe? Oh, yes, I tithe. And I ask Lily later on, uh, that's not so. <laughs> just because you say you are a member, is you acting like a member? Oh, God, Lord. It is not what you say. You know I'm a member of the church, but you don't act like a member. For 40 years, a lot of people call my office. Lily will answer it. May I talk to Pastor Stephen? Next question from Lily is this. Does he know you? Oh, I know him. That was not the question. Question is, does he know you? And see, as a list of the people that I say, these are the people I know. If they call, let them come through. Just because you call me Pastor Stephen, why is you acting like a goat? Do I call you my sheep? Or I just give you one of them look? Do you have enough evidence to prove that you are a child of God? Or are you just running your mouth? Even in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15, read that this morning. Paul saying, even Lucifer, the angel of light, had got all these preachers. They act like they are, but the life is not. Like I say, I grew up in a Catholic school, Catholic university, graduated from Catholic university, and one time there was this father. He was talking about a young man who wanted to go into the ministry. He said, you want to go? Yeah, I want to be a father. I want to be in the ministry. He said, let's go. We're going to the town today. He said, okay, let's go. So they went into the town. They went to the bus station. They went to the railway station. They went to the market. They came, and they came back. And that young man says, you dragged me all over, but you didn't say a thing. He said, yeah, there's no need to say. Did you see me help that woman with her groceries? Did you see me help that old woman to get in a bus? Did you see me help me that old papa over there? He said, it's not what you say. It is what you do. Let me ask you a question. Do you have enough evidence that somebody can look at you and say you are a man of God? Or a woman of God? Or are you just running your mouth? Especially at family union. You know, everybody is saved at your family union. Oh, I'm going to leave that one alone. With a cigarette in his mouth, you're talking and he's saved. With a Jack and Daniel in both his hands. I'm saying. <laughs> okay, five minutes. My main point today. I read about the foundations. Number one, to gates, to destiny, to trees, to response. Is your mouth and your walk work together. Number five is two foundations. Folks, follow Jesus and whole hell will follow you. I will not preach to you. You come to my church and you be a millionaire. I will not do that. I will not ask 10 people to come and bring me $1,000. And before the end of the year, all of you will be millionaire. I don't play those games. 
What do I preach? I preach like Job. Job 14 and 1 says, A man born of the woman lives a short life. And all that short life is full of trouble. And especially when I say, if you have entered to the narrow gate, if you're going to heaven, if you acting like what you say, then you follow the Lord Jesus. I tell you one thing. You will hear this thing many times. Pastor, pray for me. It is one thing or the other. Welcome to Christianity. Welcome to pruning. We were talking to Brother Gary. My wife was asking about the peach tree. How come they need this and all that? Brother Gary said, oh, you need to prune it. Eh? <laughs> see, see, some of you believe I'm too hard on you. I'm not too hard on you. I'm down to prune. So shut your mouth. When you are on a stretcher, when you are, and the surgeon is performing a surgery, do you run your mouth? No, you is out. <laughs> I am trying to help you make heaven your home. I'm trying to help you bear fruits. I got three minutes. Okay, look. In 2018, there was a hurricane called Hurricane Michael. It hit Florida. And one beach called Mexico Beach, all the houses were destroyed. As a matter of fact, not now. When you go home, Google it. 2018, Hurricane Michael. All the houses were destroyed except one. And they asked the man who built that house, why is it all the houses on Mexico Beach fell and your stood still? This is what he says. He said, I built it to the codes that was even more than the strict by the law required. Meaning, they went over and above. They say, put this one this deep. They went deeper than that. They say, use this side of steel. They use bigger one. Huh? They say, use this concrete, and they, they did stronger more than that. And Bibles, uh, and uh, the newspaper say, and all the houses fell except that. Let me ask you a question. Don't talk to me about he is more than enough God. Do you, do you, do you, do you go over and above in following him? People got, I got two minutes. People got upset. When a man of God says about tithe. When he say he don't believe in tithe. And they got upset with him. And they shut him off. By the way, that was Brother Creflo Dollar, if you want me to say that. But they didn't hear the whole message. Whole message, what he said that it is an insult to give God your 10%. And some of you want to fight tooth and nail. Tithe is under the law. Why are you wasting my time? You ain't going to do it anyway. You just want to argue. Huh? What did that man say? I'm going to close. That man say, I went beyond the code of building a house so I can find the dead rock at the bottom. And I stood. Folks, Jesus is the solid rock. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, how you build on it, it depends on you. Are you building wood, hay, and stubble, or gold and silver and precious stone? On that day, one match, and you're going to find out what will happen. 
two gates, two destiny, two trees, two response, two foundations. Would you stand please? I know you heard this message. You be going to church or not going to church. But today I give you opportunity to say yes to that narrow road. To troubles, floods, wind, storms. But I'm here to tell you, God will see you through. Is there anyone say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to make my assurance of salvation. Anyone, lift your hand towards heaven. If you are like that, don't be a hurt. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Jesus is the only way, the truth and life, folks. Don't play with eternity. Hell is too hot, heaven is too good, eternity is too long for you to play. Father Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that we will believe Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. In this world, we will have trouble, but you are here with us in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I'll see you next time. Thank you.